We've been looking at fractions as parts of a whole. What happens when we have all the parts? We can't forget about the whole. This hexagon is fully shaded. We can say that it is one whole hexagon. What if we split it into three equal parts? We now have three out of three parts shaded, or three thirds. Let's split it into six equal parts. Now we have six sixths. Each of these are equivalent fractions, meaning that they are equal. They are all different ways of writing one whole. Notice that the numerator and denominator are the same number. Anytime that happens with a fraction, it is equal to one. Let's say that we have a whole pizza and cut it into eight pieces. How can we write that as a fraction? That's right, eight eighths, or eight over eight. Now we have two hexagons. Each hexagon has one part. This means that our numerator is two, since two parts are shaded, and our denominator is one, since there is one part to the whole. We just wrote the number two as a fraction. Two over one is an example of how we can write a whole number as a fraction. Let's try it again with circles. Here we have three circles. Each circle has one part shaded out of one. This means we have three parts shaded, our numerator out of one, our denominator. Look at that. We just represented three as a fraction. Notice that with both of these examples, the whole or regular number is written over one. This is another way we can represent whole numbers. Whole numbers do not have any fractional parts. Let's try this using a number line. We have already looked at splitting the number line up into parts. If we split it into three parts, we have one third, then two thirds, and then three thirds. Three thirds is equivalent or equal to one. Do you think we can keep going? Look at that. Six thirds is equivalent to two. So we can write two as two over one, or as six thirds. Let's try some practice. Here we have a number line, and we need to place these shapes at certain numbers. Let's get started. We need to place the star at two over one. This is the same as two. Perfect. Next, we need to place the circle at four fourths, or four over four. When the numerator and the denominator are the same number, that means you have all the parts of a whole, and that is one. All right, last shape. The lightning bolt goes on three fourths. Okay, the number line is split into four parts already, which means that starting at zero, we can count one, two, three, and here is three fourths. Great job placing all those shapes. All right, let's try another example. Here we have to figure out which fraction represents point A on the number line. Let's look at what we know about point A. Since it is to the right of one, it must be more than one. Well, looking at our options, we can cross off three thirds. The numerator and denominator there are the same, so that's just equal to one. Next, we have one third. This fraction means that only one section out of three are shaded. If it were a box, the whole box wouldn't be shaded. That is less than one whole. Our next option is six thirds. Let's sketch out where that could be. We know one is the same as three thirds, so let's make three more marks to get to six thirds. That looks correct. Point A must be six thirds. There are so many ways to write out whole numbers. Let's determine which of these numbers represents a whole number. First, we learned that when the numerator and the denominator are the same, it is equivalent to one. So, four fourths and seven sevenths are whole numbers. We also learned that when a number is written over one, it is a whole number. We can circle five over one. Let's check three halves and four halves on a number line. Here is our number line with sections split into two parts. One, two, three. Three halves is not a whole number. Moving on. Four. Four halves is the same as two. Woohoo! We found another whole number. Wow, we have learned a lot about whole numbers written as fractions. We can write the whole number over one. The number one can also be written with the same numerator and denominator. It can be anything, like five over five, or 130 over 130. You try it. 
Don't be afraid to choose a huge number. That was a whole lot of fraction learning. Great work. See you next time.